Yo, what is going on guys? It's 12th here and I'm back here with another video. What I got for you guys today is the ultimate color correction tutorial because I'm not just doing one example, I'm doing three different examples and I'll have them put on the screen right now. I wanted to do multiple examples of doing color corrections because often when you do one color correction is obviously you can't use the same color correction for if you're making a certain cinematic or something like that. So I'm doing two different types of color corrections but three different types of clips. And real quick before we get into the video, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for the amount of support on my supporter creator code. I plugged it in my last video, which is the first time I've ever plugged it, and I've gotten so much support. So thank you guys so much for that. If you guys want to go ahead and use it, it's going to be on screen right now. If you don't want to use it, that's okay. But if you do, thank you guys so much, and I really appreciate that. With this first cinematic we're going to be doing right here, this is going to be a more cinematic style, like movie-ish style. It's not going to have flashy colors or anything like that. It's going to be pretty much taking a clip that looks ugly and making it look pretty without adding any flashy lights or anything like that. And this is definitely useful if you're trying to go for something um, almost color grading and you don't want that montage style. So for the first one right here, we are going to need a plugin. It's called Magic Bullet Looks. I would really recommend getting it. It makes doing color corrections a lot easier and oftentimes they look better. But for these last two examples, I purposely made them without any plugins because I'm sure a lot of you guys don't have the plugins and that's totally fine. However, for this first one though, I definitely recommend getting Magic Bullet Looks because it just makes it so much easier. But yeah, let's get right into this anyways. So this is the before right here. It looks really blue. It doesn't look good at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new solid. You just right click, go solid. Um, make sure it's the same size of your, as your composition and make sure it's black as well and then go ahead and click OK. Now this is going to be for the black bars because obviously if you're going for the cinematic look you definitely want black bars. This isn't really a part of the color correction but it's definitely needed. So we're going to go ahead and add CC Jaws. Now if you guys saw what I did right there it's actually a plugin from Video Copilot. It makes searching effects a lot easier. If you guys want to go ahead and download that it's in the description and it's free so go ahead and install that if you want. But if you don't have that you just go over here to effects and presets and go ahead and type in what you want which is CC Jaws and then add that on there. Anyways, now that we have this on, we're gonna go ahead and go to completion, put this to 80, and then now we have some shark teeth that we're gonna change the height to zero, and there's our black bars. It's that quick, that easy. And then we're gonna go ahead and hide this layer because I'm just gonna use the one I made before, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now we're seriously gonna get started into the color correction. We're gonna add an adjustment layer. I already have one right here. The first thing we're gonna add right here is magic bullet looks. And once we have Magic Bullet Looks on there, we're going to go and open that up. So now that we're in Magic Bullet Looks, once again, this is a plugin. If you guys don't have it, I really recommend it. It's by Red Giant. We're going to go to Subject, and we are going to add Contrast. And once we've added Contrast, we're going to go back to that list, and we're going to add Curves. And then we're going to go to Post, and we are going to add um, Warm Slash Cool. And we are also going to add Colorista 3-Way. Now, typically I would use color ranges, but for the cinematic when I was doing it for this color correction, I accidentally used it, but it ended up looking really good anyways. So when you're making a color correction, I would try it both and see which one you like better. Okay, so now that we have all of this on here, obviously it doesn't look any different because we haven't done anything yet to it. So for the contrast, we're just going to add a little bit of contrast to this image before we do the curves. And when you're doing these color corrections, you pretty much just want to go through, um, just go up and down, scroll through this and uh, stop wherever you think it looks nice. So I think somewhere like right here at around 0 0.050 looks good for the contrast. And then we're done with that one. We're gonna go and go to curves. We have five points here and each one of the five points is gonna do a different thing. So for this first one, like I said, just go up and down and see where it looks good and then stop wherever you think it looks good. So I think, I don't wanna do too much to this first one right here. So we're gonna go and move to the second one. I only turned it down a little bit. I didn't do very much to it. For the second one, we're going to go ahead and put this, let's see. So, if we go down, you can see what parts of the image are getting darker. And we can go up. So, I want those parts to be a little bit brighter. So, something like that right there. Now, for the second one, let's go down, see what this looks like. And you guys can see when I'm doing this, I'm going up and down, just not that dramatic at least, but... <laughs> All right, so let's go to the next one. And when I'm doing these, make sure you guys go up and down and look at what part of the image it's changing. So if I go all the way down, you guys can see that it's changing this floor right here, some of the wall, this wall dramatically, and this wall back here. So just look at that parts, look at those parts of the image and see what you want to change. So for this one, I think we're going to go a little bit darker and go down like that. So for this next one, let's look at what we need. And looking at this one, it makes the walls a lot brighter, makes the, the floor brighter. So for this one, I actually do want the wall to be a little bit brighter to almost make it seem like the moon is making the wall brighter. So I think that looks good right there. And then here we go for this last one. We're not going to do too much to this. We're just going to leave it like almost right where it was, maybe a little bit lower. 
Okay, so now we have to go to warm slash cool. Now when you're on warm and cool, I would only recommend sticking to the left side of it and to the right side of it. I wouldn't recommend going up or down just because those introduce some colors that really aren't um, too interesting that you should be using. But if you want to go for something a little wacky, you have that option. But for this tutorial, we're going to be going from the left and to the right. So if you're going for something a little more warm toned, then you want to go to the orange side, which is to the left. And if you want something more blue, which is going to be cool toned, you're going to want to go to the right. For this one, it's already really blue, but we haven't got to the colorista three way yet. So we're going to go ahead and make this add a little bit of blue tone to it. That'll look a lot better once we finish that last effect. So for this one, I'm just going to drag it to wherever I think looks nice. All right. So I think that looks good right there. And then this is where we're going to see the really, really big change. Now for the highlights of the image, we're going to go back to blue. We're going to add some more blue to the image. I mean, there's there's way too much blue, but again, we haven't gone to the midtones and the shadows yet. And that's where we're going to see the biggest change. So for the highlights, we're gonna, just going to add a good amount of blue, maybe a bit of a brighter blue, something like that right there. And if again, you can change these little, these little side dials as well if you would like to, but I think it looked good right where it was. Maybe a little bit more actually. Okay, so there we go. We have a, an absurd amount of blue, but this is where we see the big change. So now we're gonna go to the midtone right here. And like I said, this is where we're gonna see the biggest change. And we're gonna add a little bit of orange to this to take away some of that blue. If you can see, it's changing a lot already. And that's because the midtone is where most of the colors are in the picture. So we're just gonna keep going up to orange, almost like an orange is yellowish, something like right there. There we go. You can see that's a huge difference already. I mean, literally. So for the shadow, we're just going to add um, like a, a yellowish orange, almost dark though, because again, it's a shadow. We, we don't want the shadows to be bright like that at all. So I think something around here looks good, like right there. That looks perfect. Okay, so I just messed with the settings for a little bit, and I think that's right where we want it to be. And again, if you're doing these color corrections, I would stick a lot more time on them. I would put more time into them, get it perfected, because obviously this is a tutorial, so I can't go into that in depth into making it look perfect because I don't want the video to be an hour long. So we're going to go and click finished. We're going to make sure that layer's on. And now for the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to add some glow. Now, typically with any cinematic, you don't want to use this, but if you guys can see right here, we have some neon lights. And that's part of the reason why I got this cinematic, because I just think it looks good. So we're going to go ahead and put the glow back on to make these neon lights pop a little bit more because they don't really pop. They don't look neon. They just look static. So we're going to put that on like 200 because we want the glow to be more spread out. And we're going to go to the glow colors and put that on A and B. So that way we can now control what the colors are. So right here we have A and B and whatever we change these two are what the glow is going to change to. So let's change this to the exact color that's on here. So let's grab, let's pick whip this color and there we go. And we're just going to change the threshold because if I go down, you can see it appear on the wall and we don't want that. We want it to only be on the neon lights. So let's just drag it to like right there where it's only on the lights. And there we go. That's the before that we just edited. And then here's the one that I sat and down and did a couple hours ago. So there we go. You can see they're almost indistinguishable. They're, they're pretty similar. It's a little bit different. But so that's what you're going to do for this kind of cinematic. And again, depending on what cinematic you have, if it's daytime, nighttime, if it's too bright, if it's too dark, it's all going to impact how much um, colors you do, how much curves you do, certain colors, you know, stuff like that. It's all going to change. So you can't copy and paste the settings that I'm using, but you can definitely use the same strategy to what I'm doing. So that is that cinematic done right there. Now we're going to move on to the next one. All right, so this is going to be the second example. Now, I feel like this is going to be the example that most of you guys use. Basically, what we're going to be doing to the clip is taking out the dull colors and adding some more colorful colors to it, adding some glow, make, turning up the contrast, just making it more appealing on the eyes. And now this right here is the um, original clip with no color correction on it. And then this is the after right here. And you guys can see it looks a little more blue. The sky's glowing a little bit more. The grass is darker. Everything just looks a lot nicer. And like I said, these last two have no third party plugins. So you guys can do this right now if you just download After Effects. All right, so let's get started. Let's go ahead and make that new adjustment layer like we did last time. And the first thing we're going to be adding is glow. So let's add some glow to it. And like we did with the last clip, we're going to change the radius to like 200 because we don't want it to be that low. It's way too close together. So now it's way more spread out and we're going to do the same thing and change it to A and B colors. So now we can control what color the glow is. So now we're going to go ahead and go to color A and we're going to change this to something like blue. Now you can change this to whatever you want, but I think blue has the best results because it highlights the skies. But again, you can change it to something like red. So we're going to change this to like blue, like a light blue, almost like a sky color. And then we're going to change the threshold to change, turn that up, something like that. 
and then we're gonna change the intensity to 0.1 so actually we're gonna turn this down back down to 60. so if i turn this on and off you guys can see that it's very subtle but it definitely makes a difference and it makes the sky look a lot better so the next thing we're going to be doing is adding an effect called cc toner so the first thing we're going to do with cc toner is click on midtones and we're going to change this to blue just like we did with the glow so once you've got whatever color you want you're going to click ok and then move on to the shadows now with the shadows you're going to literally do the exact same thing take a blue but take a darker blue and then go with that so once you got the colors that you want you're going to go to blend with original and you're going to put that to something like 90 maybe like 85 let's see we got like 85 and then you can do like 95 but i think either 85 or 90 is usually the sweet spot so for this one we're going to do 90 and then we're going to add cc toner once again and for this one we're going to do red now like i said i don't think red really looks good for montages but we're going to add just a very slight subtle red that way it adds a little bit of contrast in colors so we're just going to rinse and repeat the same process we're going to grab the red that we want click ok go to the shadows grab the red that we want and then click okay so now that we've got our colors picked we're going to change this one but instead of 90 we're going to do like 97 so that way it's very subtle and when i turn this on and off you, it's literally almost indistinguishable but it is there all right so now we're going to add an effect called photo filter and we're going to change this to custom and with this one we're just going to be going for literally like a pitch black almost gray color so make sure you stick to the left of the spectrum and then go all the way down and there's something like that right there is perfect we're going to click ok and change the density to 30. now for this one you can change the density to something like 20 or 30 but i usually keep it on 30 and then once we finish with the color correction i'll go back and change it to see if maybe it needs to be a little less or a little more intense so that took a little bit of the color out of it if you guys can see just a little bit though we'll, but we'll be adding it back to it so now we're going to be adding another photo filter and we're gonna be doing custom once again. And for this one, we're gonna do something like blue. So we're gonna do another darkish blue, maybe a little bit brighter. And then we're gonna change the density to something like 10. Now we're gonna go ahead and add hue and saturation. Okay, so then now that we have the hue and saturation done, we're gonna go ahead and add curves. Now curves is probably where you see one of the biggest difference because that adds some contrast into the image now. So I usually use three points. So let's just go ahead and click our three points. Now we have three points to work with so we're going to go ahead and go to this first point and drag it down because we want to make the darks darker and add some more contrast into that and for the second one i usually just leave it right where it is right in the center and then for the last one we're just going to drag it up a little bit and there we go that's pretty much it for right there if you guys can if i turn it on and off you can see the massive difference and it makes the sky much brighter makes the stuff right here much darker just makes it look good add some contrast to it now we're going to add brightness and contrast and the reason why i'm adding brightness and contrast right after we did curves because sometimes you get the curves the way you want them to be but maybe you want a little bit more brightness and a little more contrast but you don't want to have to mess mess with the curves and the good thing about that is too is if you copy and paste everything in my opinion it's a lot easier to tweak numbers than tweak this little graph right here so this is kind of the reason why i have so for the brightness we're going to add like two and then for the contrast we'll do something like 20. and again it's pretty given but when you're doing stuff like this the numbers are going to be different depending on what clip so there we go we added a little bit more contrast and brightness to the image so for this last thing we're going to go ahead and add sharpen now once sharpens on we're just going to change it to something low like 10. i wouldn't go above 10 because if you go to like 50 or something like dramatic you can see that it highlights it way too much and it just doesn't look good at all it looks way too sharp and still so we're going to keep that at like 10. so here's our before and here's our after now i think the uh after looks a little bit better and the before is a little bit darker so like i was saying we can just go back to here and then change the contrast to like 15 maybe change the curves a little bit and there we go that is pretty much it right there that's also a good lesson because often when you do color corrections you will be tweaking it so that's good but that is pretty much it with the montage example and now we're going to be going on to the cinematic example so now that we're on the cinematic edit example this one's going to be pretty similar to the montage example with a few settings tweaked so we're going to go ahead and go back to the montage example and literally copy all that we just did and paste it right here so now that we copy and paste it you can see that we have to change a few things like it's a little bit too dark so we can go down here make it a little less dark so there we go makes that look a little bit better we can change the brightness to like zero maybe we want some more glow so we can turn the glow up because it is that montage style of cinematic 
so we can add some more glow into it that looks pretty good maybe it's a little too much actually there we go now we have some more glow into it if i turn that off add some glows to the um the smoke right here that's pretty much it i mean you, it's literally the same style pretty much as the montage example just maybe tweak some few things turn off some few things stuff like that but it's pretty much copy and paste and change a few settings like maybe it's too green let's change it to like 25 and then after we tweaked all the settings of course here's the before with nothing on it and then here's the after and that is pretty much it guys thank you guys so much for watching this is actually my third time recording this tutorial because the second time i wasn't even recording the screen and then the first time i messed up 20 minutes in so i was like freaking i'm just restarting so hopefully third time was the mark thank you guys so much for sticking through this tutorial hopefully it was good enough like i said if you guys need any help put it in the comment section below and i'll be sure to help you guys out if you guys want to use my supporter creator code it's going to be on screen right here if you guys don't want to use it though that's no problem thank you for considering it anyways i also have my twitter in the description below if you want to go and follow me there to keep up with me if i have any updates or anything like that if you want to keep up with my videos hit that subscribe button hit that post notification so you always know when i upload because i don't upload every day so it's good to know when exactly i upload be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video thank you guys so much once again peace out